the housing market is blazing hot right now. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about how to not get discouraged when buying a home. Caribbean, right? Yeah. Just imagine yourself poolside with an ocean view. Mai Tais, baby. I only bring up vacation because usually it's hot where you're going. Right now, the real estate market is hot. Scorching. Scorching hot. And Casey didn't even see that coming, but no. uh, <laughs> it's beautiful, though. I like to throw those curveballs at him every once in a while. Yeah. So today, everyone, we're talking about how to avoid getting discouraged in a hot market. Bring your flip-flops, my friends. Yeah, yeah, the heat's out there for sure. It's coming in heat waves, actually. Some extra sunscreen, I think. Yeah, definitely yeah. a little extra sunscreen, for sure. And as we get in closer to probably springtime or the summertime, you're really going to feel that heat, right? You're going to feel it. I don't know. I feel like we're <laughs> news reporters now. Yeah, totally. Why not? Well, gang, huh. I'm happy to be here with you guys. How's everyone doing? I'm doing great. We're yeah. just doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how about you guys? Yeah, okay. Thanks. <laughs> oh, wow, thanks. Just a quick intro for everyone. Of course, we have Casey Carpenter, and we have the mother of mortgages, Bree Fisher. Hi, everyone. I wish I was better at sound effects because I would add some sort of like jingle to your name, mm-hmm. like a. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bow bow bow. No. I can do like I'll throw a little dust. Yeah, don't tempt us fairy. with an air horn. <laughs> <laughs> so for today's show on. Wait, and who are you? Oh. I Nobody know. Who's this guy? Really cares, I but know. I'm Addie Nat. Hi, Hi Addie. Nat. <laughs> well, hello, Addison. Yeah, we're kind of shaking up the intro here. It's something new. A little, yeah. be a little choppy, but doesn't mean the shirt can't be ironed out, right? Right. Exactly. Right. So so put it in the dryer you, what, with a wet washcloth. It'll come to. right out. Oh, what a ding dang doom. <laughs> a double whammy with you right there. A double wham, bam, <laughs> shape, bam. But you are listening or watching to. M-L-O. M-L-O. This is the crew, guys. And once again, we're talking about how to avoid getting discouraged in a hot market because mm-hmm. inventories are popping. Things are moving fast. Mm-hmm. We've got buyers on 6, 12, 18 offers with uh, no success. So there's a lot right. of things you could do that we've talked about in the past. But we're going to review kind of some bullets to really control what you can control and stay sane through intense times. Right, guys? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So to pop her off right off, I think we want to go uh, Casey with some uh, stats. Da, 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 some da, 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 statistics for sure. Bring guys. it up, Casey. And, uh, this is just fun. I mean, there's some there's some fun stuff that I found that I thought uh, I could throw at you guys as some questions. But I wanted to go over, uh, just give you guys some stuff on what's going on nationally, right? Mm. So we know where we're at nationally. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to also talk about local market. And here for us specifically, we're talking Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. Pacific Northwest, and you know, Southwest Washington. And Southwest thing. Washington. Yeah, and, and we got some other f- feelers out there that me and Bree have licenses in, license in as well. But um, but this is some good stuff. And I'm also going to, uh, you know, touch in on the Fed. I want to let everybody know kind of what we got for. You're doing a Fed drop. Yeah, just, just a wow. quick one. A little like Kevin Federline. Interest rate, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. Federline. Yeah. Comfortable. Stuff. Awesome. All let's right, do so it. Let's just start right there, though, guys, because it's like, hey, what are we doing at home? Are we going to buy? Are we renting? Like, what's the interest rate? What would be that? This is right out of the gate. Feds are gonna, you know, help us out here. Especially we've got a lot of factors going on, but they're gonna keep interest rates near zero until 2023. But I want us just to touch on briefly when we say Feds are gonna keep interest rates near zero till 2023. We're not just talking, you know, interest rates as a blanketed whole, right? There's some right. factors there. They're talking about federal funds rates, right? right? Right. And that is specific towards what kind of debts, guys? Credit cards auto loans, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So what this does is is it's, it helps your buyers right now, though, because you can just – it's just giving us some some breath of fresh air that we don't have any uncertainty coming up as far as maybe hikes or something like that that they're thinking about. They're telling right. you, hey, right. our thoughts are we're just going to keep rates low. And this is the reason, guys. It's because you know while the economic recovery – and this is per what, they're, what, what the feds are saying – while the economic recovery has progressed more quickly than generally expected – Overall, economic activity still remains low and slow, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And with that, 
We're just talking. They want to keep it there to where they can try to control the uh, you know the market a little bit to help that grow. Yeah, so. just to hop in there really quick, and I'd like to hear Breeze this. We don't want to get too long winded, but it's very important for people to know that the Feds do not set the mortgage interest rates. Right. So it's the baseline access to money for companies, governments, everyone on a right. higher, higher level. And then it all trickles down to uh, the American slice of pie, right? So Absolutely. by the time it gets to the consumer, the home buyer, the refinancer, mm -hmm. there's layers, and that's the margin that creates right. the interest rate. So what Casey's saying about the feds are committing to a position of more affordable funds mm -hmm. for companies to continue evolving and kind of jumpstarting the uh, the economy, right? Right, Please. absolutely. And, and that's a great way to start, Casey, because that goes right into, you know, low inventory and navigating the market. Because I think, so you know, for most of, of the latter half of 2020, um, there was the majority of consensus was that interest rates were going to climb in 2021 and not too late in 2021, pretty early actually in 2021. And we're not seeing that. We're seeing them, you know, in the last few weeks, they've actually even been lower than what they were the end part of um, the of 2020. And so that's perfect. So people are like, oh my gosh, I have to buy right now to take advantage of the rates. You know, that will help them step back, maybe take a deep breath and say, okay, let's make sure what we're buying is within our budget, um, even with a low inventory. Yeah. And yeah. as we kind of explain these other steps of like navigating this hot market, right, it gives them time to do that. Yes. You know, like yes. maybe even get in the pre-approval stuff that Addie will mm -hmm. talk about a little bit later. But let's talk, jump into some national stats. Uh, and this one's for out, anyone out there that actually owns a home and, and, and wants to know maybe how much their home appreciated. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, National home appreciation gained uh, around three and a half percent, and this was the highest since April 2014. But this That's is on national. a national average. Mm. What's nice, and I'm going to relate that to this kind of our local market here, being because um, every market's different, guys. So you have to mm. take that in consideration. Yeah, you know, Midwest, West Coast, East Coast, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, no Northwest being one of the top markets, you know, one of the upper end markets. And we're hovering around that 5% or more appreciation factor. And th that is, that's something to be said. It also explains, too, why it's such a hot market. Right, right. And, and so that's just kind of a fun stat there. I do have one here that's a little bit of a uh, trivia question we'll see for you guys. <laughs> and this is, I uh, wanted to know the state's that had the highest like annual home uh, uh, price gain. So annual home, uh, just price gain. So upwards from, you know, one year, let's just say they were at this price point range and now, now 2020, you know, how much did they improve? So that you're, you were curious about the states that had the highest appreciation. Yes, sir. And, and, okay. and, and the way, the, the way that it was quoted here is states with the highest annual home price gains. Home price, price gains. gains. I'm just have a feeling you're gonna give us a quiz, and there might be a prize. So I hope I win it. We are just gonna choose state names here. So mm -hmm. okay. do we have to know the state capital too? Yeah, we do not. Yeah, but not it's gonna be capital. interesting. So we're just gonna have three states here, guys. What do you think? What do you think your top three states were? I'm gonna say Oregon is number one. Good. Or good, good. one of them. Uh -huh. Yeah. One in top. Why three. not? Why not? I'm gonna say mm -hmm. Florida number That's two. I hide my notes. Mm -hmm. Florida. And then. Texas. All right. So or weird. So Ad Texas Ad Ad nice. Addie has Oregon, Florida, Florida and Texas. Texas. All right, Bree, what do you But have? I feel like Arizona should be in there, but I'm not sure. I'm you, going with my gut. Oh, you know, yeah, Oregon's a good one to say, but I think I'm going to go with, I'm going to go a little out of out of the box here. I think I'm going to mm. go Minnesota. Oh, my gosh. Uh, California and Arizona. Ooh. Well, in California is interesting. I was thinking about that because mm -hmm. the price is already so high. That right. three per so is it percentage or dollar amount? It could be a skewed yeah. platform here. Yeah, you know yeah. me and my skeptics. I know. And, and well, most that's why I'm just going. But this is for fun. I'm going off the <laughs> quote. Okay. That's why I say <laughs> the quote says annual home price gain. Tell okay, us, my hands are getting tell, sweaty. Tell. Right, here we go, guys. <laughs> Idaho. Tell oh, oh I totally do. It is, that is <laughs> right there. Why did I not think? They're of so Idaho? close to us. <laughs> By the way, license. If you guys are thinking about that, it's the Idaho. potatoes. Yeah. Idaho up 19. percent Wow. I wow. feel silly for not knowing that. Wow, we should have bought there Guess like two what? years I'll ago. Give you a hint. I'll give you a hint on the next one. It's another I. Iowa. Illinois. <gasps> Indiana. Oh Indiana. 
Indiana, 16%? that's wow. That's where the movie uh, Hoosiers, Hoosiers was filmed. <laughs> Let her fly. Anyway, we're not I would go there, there too. Go. Wow. Okay. All right, last one, guys. You want okay. one more hint or you just want me to rock and roll? Rock and roll. Maine. Oh, my Maine. goodness. There's a port one there. Guys. I knew. I knew. <laughs> We're that's totally off. Not We're so like, off. Well, course. I guess that's why we just do the mortgages and not <laughs> the history right? lesson. Yeah. Nice. I really like so that. That was kind of fun. I just, I just thought I'd throw that out there because this next stuff will be, we'll fly into it just to let you guys know where we're at yeah. for inventory levels. I do want to put this out there because I thought this was interesting. Hmm. NAR, National Association of Realtors, yeah. uh, reports in inventory like indicated based off of number of properties marked active on the market and also... Pending sales, mm. which was interesting mm-hmm. too, because you have you know it's active and then pending, mm-hmm. which means you know we're we're in something. So mm-hmm. that was interesting just just to know. But so in debt for inventory levels out there, guys, we're just talking how many homes are available in the market for you to purchase, mm-hmm. and that's what inventory is. And this is just good to know because they'll break it down to you as far as percentage wise, and then month supply. So basically, uh, December twenty twenty inventory. Uh, that's properties listed on the market. This was down 16.4%, guys, from November 2020. It's a huge Say drop. one more time. And one time. Month. Now, the one thing that's interesting is you got mm-hmm. holidays, you got different stuff to change, so don't take mm-hmm. that as a complete drastic, but that's a big drop going into it. Overall, though, compared to 2019 December, we're talking 23% drop in inventory, guys. So what that means is that's one of you're hitting record low setting numbers for inventory levels, guys. And that's a big number to be aware of and also concerned about, which is why we'll hopefully be here to help you navigate all these thoughts and concerns with all that. Right. Mm -hmm. Where did all the houses go? Where did all the houses go? Another question is that we can probe into is. Where's the supply? Let's get them built. Right. Let's get them going. Here, right? Here's another stat for you, Casey. Normally, we've got 1.2 million in homes on the market throughout the U.S. Yes. Right now, 327,000. Mm. So we're, I mean, normally one so to like 1.2 million homes. So a quarter of the normal homes. inventory. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, throughout and, the country. And to flip that into a uh, month, month perspective for our viewers and listeners out there, uh, historically... You want to kind of see six months mm-hmm. of inventory. You know, six months mm-hmm. uh, gives you just a nice, nice even push. But uh, December 2020, the month supply was a record low of 1.9 months, guys. 1.9 months, that means that it would take less than two months to sell all the homes that we got in, mm-hmm. you know, in the nation, across the nation. So that's some interesting stuff. Um, I want to flip it real quick. Before I get long-winded and take up all the segments, guys, just to our local stats. So here, Portland, Oregon, uh, and I was just looking up uh, Multnomah County specific and provided by some of our local title uh, representatives. It's a strong seller's market here, as we all know, right? Strong seller's market. The uh, home sales, they just constantly continue to honestly just strip away from our low inventory that we have. Fun fact is... Home appreciation, like we already mentioned earlier, is higher than the national average. So that's great. Mm-hmm. It means we got a lot of, a lot yeah. of you know, places to come. People are coming here. Average days on market is 42 days for your homes. The And, and take that in consideration, too, guys. You still have some prep time to list a home, right? And close. Like 42. And so close, like, like, oh, it's not that much. No, they're listing the home. They're getting into a contract pictures, and doing a traditional 20 to 30 day close mm-hmm. all in 42 days. That's insane. Insane. And then medium, to medium list price. That's a big one. Yeah. 676 January 2021. That is up from 560 mm-hmm. February 2018, mm-hmm. big time, guys. We're talking, you know, that's 200K. You know, uh, what stood out to me, though, is the seven to 90 day moving average price for, let's, you know, because n- not all homes sell, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. barely budged. The price right. change was barely anything. We're talking mm-hmm. like a five to 10K. So, um, last stat I throw out there, and this is so wrapping you guys all around average rent is $2,100. Yeah, that's pretty insane. And I want to jump in before you forget. The interesting and concerning thing for me for the Pacific Northwest, like that Portland, Vancouver market, is you're seeing that just the the bridge from the maximal, maximum allowed conventional loan mm-hmm. 
and the median sales price get really far apart. Yeah. So like if you're looking yeah. back at like 2019, going to 2020, like I think back in 19 it was 484, 484,000 max, and your um, median list price was at or under the max conventional loan. Right. So now we're at 545 and change on max loan limit, but your median list price is 130k over <laughs> the most they can borrow. So right. it's turning now to Portland being likely a candidate for a high price market in the next coming years. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a great that's point. an overflow great from point. Bay Area, uh, Los Angeles, people moving from all around the country. Seattle. Right, kind of Seattle. Thing. So mm -hmm. tough. Right. Tough, tough, tough. Who's got to, I mean, not a lot of people can qualify for mm -hmm. higher than a conventional loan for a lot of detail stuff on the jumbo. But if you can only borrow 545 and you got to bring that yield spread from the sales price mm -hmm. to the max, that's a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. A lot of cash or you have to adjust your expectations for your next house. Right. So can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about that, Addy, about the pre-approval and yeah, totally. going through and that? I you know Casey, great job with those stats. Uh, I really liked the trivia thing. I, I did too. I'm sad I was away. I didn't even get one right. Come on. But uh, We weren't even in the right hemisphere, really. No, <laughs> no. First, no. I, I'm orbiting around the wrong point. <laughs> that's why when I heard it, like I was like, I have to throw yeah, this no, that's, there that's, that's so fun. interesting. It's that's good, good. Good stuff. Indiana. Wow. Well, and I think Chad is staying positive too because what I always tell my clients is what's challenging about real estate is you have to wear two different hats. One is the emotional hat and one mm. is that financial hat. Because you have to mentally move into the home to be wanting to consider and then make that jump to put an offer in. Mm -hmm. You have to, you gotta see all your furniture there. You gotta see how you would lay out the patio. And right. What rooms would be for what kids and where your family would stay and what all that stuff. But then when you don't get it, it's like your heart's broken. So you're going through these like micro relationships for every single offer. And as it heats up, it becomes more frustrating and more heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But if you can develop that skill set of putting on the financial hat, like, hey, I moved into my head, but I'm putting on this. These are the numbers. I'm working with my mortgage advisor. And that's the key component is yeah. getting pre-approved. And it's it probably we beat it over everyone's head. Right. But it's a way that you can craft your offer to be even more competitive. Because if you are teaming up with someone like us on the MLO team or one of our referral partners within the network, we know we're going to work a system. And that system is, hey, we're going to do all the upfront work for every single property, right? We're going to break down those taxes and give you a really accurate estimate for in-time interest rates to the product and the credit scenario for you. And you completely know what's going on before that offer goes in. Lastly, I call the listing agent. You put in that offer, I'm calling them over and over and over. I'm finding who I know, whether I'm friends with them on Facebook or I've done um, past transactions with them. So that goes back to that, um, that support and the strategy. You can control those things. You can control who you decide to work with and who is going to support you through it all. Um, that, that listing call is so important. It's so Addy. big. It's and people so just big. don't do it. It's D unbelievable. They don't they, do no. it. This weekend, I called I, several listing agents on offers for buyers that had in. And it was interesting. Every single listing agent I called said, oh, my God, Bree, thank you for calling. We've got 23 offers, and you're only, you're the, the, only fourth lend you're the, you're the fourth lender out of 23 to four. call. Yeah. And yes. those are the four lenders that we're considering for this offer. So it really does make uh, a difference. It makes a massive difference. Yep. Um, and you just never know. Like, you never know. Maybe you don't get this property, but the next one you find mm -hmm. is from the same agent. And they remember, oh, my gosh. And they're telling their clients, this team, Bree, Casey, Addy, they were yeah. all over this. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to work with these people. And a lot of sellers want to minimize the risk of the transaction falling apart. Right. And that goes to my second point on the financing side, guys. 2020, Great point. we've always, always wanted people to get upfront pre-approved when you can. So, mm -hmm. you know, supply as much documentation, the communication, the story. So important. However, I can't emphasize enough. Last year and the start of the pandemic has brought forth a lot of unique variables that don't mm -hmm. have universal guidelines anymore they are underwriting for a lot of people on a case-by-case -case basis. basis and now 
Thank you. And now you will have your frame structure of it getting approved or not, right. but there's a lot of scenarios like furloughing and right. companies, a self-employment. It's a whole nother dynamic, but businesses closing down or moving. I've heard of some staffs being moved to a temp agency for 60 days and then back, or they had to take 45 days off. Right. These are all things that need to be ironed out. Right. Service professionals, you know, like our restaurants and our mm -hmm. salons and such relied so much on tips and they're not right. getting that either. So that's an adjustment to income. So it's very true that mm -hmm. there are so many pieces that COVID brought up for qualifying for mortgages and mm -hmm. people's lives just changing, you know, in some cases drastically because of it, uh, that it's a key to know what your options are. Yeah. Some of that stuff yeah. could be a quarter thir uh, or a third of their income, you know? Completely. Yeah. The COVID overlay situations and the case by case, it just brings forth because when you have a team calling for you, mm -hmm. we want to speak with 100% confidence. Mm -hmm. So if say a listing agent did inquire, like how's the employment situation? Right. We need to be able to have integrity with our attestment to the approval. So hashing all that out before, mm -hmm. Very, very important. All the upfront work only impresses the seller. So I, mm -hmm. I, I want to bookend that whole comment on the fact that that's a controllable. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. the decision that you can make who you align yourself with and doing alleviating the stress. Right. And so for, that's going to help with that right. financial. For those industry partners that are watching and listening, right? Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't be afraid to make the call either. Like call that buyer's agent or listening agent say, Hey guys, you know, that employment history just looks a little tight, a little, you know, s scary here. Let's get this into underwriting because it's in one of those areas where it's an underwriter call mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. the gap or whatever the situation is. Right. Let's just say mm -hmm. they appreciate that rather than trying to get the loan, you know, done. Like I just had to make that call the other day and they appreciate it. Like, yes, right. it's going to take us maybe a week or longer or two weeks to figure it out. But they appreciate it because now we'll know into the going into the next transaction that we're ready to go, you know. Hopefully. Well, and there <laughs> might even be like lighter hearted situations. Like one example is I had a client who all of their assets were in a joint account with their father for yeah. survival reasons. Like if one of them passed away, yeah. all the money is there. Yeah. So I informed them up front. Hey, just to know you're going to need to get a signed access letter from your father saying that you can use all the money in this account. Since it's joint and you're buying the house by yourself. Right. Not a big deal if it's told to them up front. But I've had situations where I neglected to say that up front. And then mother or father of this huge problem mm -hmm. with signing and getting involved. And totally. it's just always totally. better to be yes. up front. You know, it's kind of like, you know, so many people right now are moving out of, let's say that you lived um, somewhere in, in, in Washington. Right. Yeah. And you want to move to, uh, Idaho. <laughs> okay. Idaho. And so you can, you're working what? remotely right now uh, because your employer is requiring that, but you can do your job remotely anywhere. So you're moving to Idaho. Uh, so that sounds like, well, that's, I'm still keeping my job. So what's the problem? Well, that's a big problem because we need to make sure that if you're buying a house in Idaho and you've been working in Washington for the last five years, we're going to ask for a letter from your employer saying they know yes. you're moving to Idaho right. and that is okay. And it's not going to affect your job, your employment status, or your income. And so it, we always tell people that up front mm -hmm. because a lot of times it's like, oh, yeah, they're okay. I can get a letter. I'll get it for you right away. And then sometimes it's like, hmm, let's backpedal a little bit really? because I totally. don't know if I, we can actually do this because my employer really doesn't know. So those pieces are really key. And doing you know, a pre-approval online, I know it's quick and fast and easy, but it is doing a disservice to you and your family if that's the only way you're getting a pre-approval and not sitting down with a mortgage advisor. And selling agents know this. They yes. If... if there's eight offers, and let's say all of them are, the offer is 500 right off the bat. Mm -hmm. The first ones that get pushed aside are those internet, candid, Completely. online approvals. They just get pushed over like recycling. Right. Or they get leveraged to enhance another offer. Right. So just know that that local piece, I love that you said that about the remote work, such a big piece. And yeah. we've been talking about big a lot factor. on the on the YouTube channels and the podcast and the MLO show, mm -hmm. I'm starting to see some of my clients come to the table as they apply with that letter. So I I love hearing yeah. and seeing that people are being proactive about it. Absolutely. Good point, Bri. Yeah. yeah. 
Especially with 2020, you know, and now 2021 and COVID and everything. Remote work is a big factor. Huge. Yeah. So, Brie, being the mother of mortgages, I I really want to hear the point of view of um, the mother and the family and the budgeting. Tell me about that because that's a big piece. People neglect the planning and all this stuff. And I think that adds to the stress. Right? Yeah. And, and, you know, the stats and, and information in the market are so key to, to successfully purchasing a home. There is one additional factor that is major when push- purchasing a home, and I don't think it's talked about often enough, and that's the subconscious emotion, your emotion mm. to buying, right? Totally. Because it is emotional. We have, you know, vets that are coming back from service that are looking for a house, you know, parents divorced and needing to set up new households um, and grandparents wanting to move closer to their kids, right? Selling Or downsizing, yes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot behind that and it's our home. It's where we, where we laugh and where we cry and scream sometimes, (laughs) 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 right? Don't ask my neighbors. Right? (laughs) (laughs) And you know, your toddlers crying all night long. Uh, We learn to cook and sew and make memories and you know, and, and, build our families around it. So it can be very emotional. If we can step back and separate the emotion from it, because it is such a financial impact and huge thing that you're doing to buying a house and just separate the emotion and look at it as a business decision. And is it checking the boxes and marking what I need? So here's four um, little quick tips to try and separate that emotion a, a little bit. The first one is I want you, either whether it's just you buying or a couple or a family to take out your top three non-negotiables. So is it school mm-hmm. district? Is it bedroom count? Is it a garage? Once you have those, go out and look at many, 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 many houses, all right? Not five or six, more, lots more. The reason being is once you do, do all that, look at the houses, I want you to revisit your three non-negotiables. Got it. Okay. A lot of the times those change. So, mm-hmm. you know, for example, if we need a garage, oh, mm-hmm. well, if we have enough land, we can build one later. So maybe this house will work. I want you to choose those three, go search for houses, revisit those three non-negotiables mm-hmm. and see if they're really still uh, important to you. Uh, the second part here is, you know, we get anxious and excited and, yeah. and it's very emotional and we get a fight or flight response oftentimes. It's human behavior. Um, and Right now, that's it's a it's a fight response. I'll offer offer fifty thousand dollars higher, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not going to be so fun when you're making right. that mortgage payment and no, still right. have other things to to, to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, the right. third part is um, don't let the decor invoke your emotions, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, I've seen couples go nuts over a baby grand piano in a room and wanted to buy the house, but totally. it didn't work for them. What about that view, though? But the view, the view. Wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> and very, very last, you guys, more <laughs> houses will come so on good. the market. Stay vigilant. Stay focused. Look for the continue. Don't lose hope. It is going to come up. Um, but just continue so to calm. look for houses. And it will happen. The right one will come along. It always does. That's, so good. That's amazing. Truth. You nailed it. I love that insight. And we're going to wrap I'm ready to buy it. You're ready to buy it. Let's go. I'm I'm ready. ready I'm getting a little jingle, jingle on the out. A little jangle on the out. So let's conclude the episode, everyone. You've either been watching or listening to MLO. And until next time, we're going to catch you. Absolutely.